With shared preferences, you can store data and also retrieve data from your local phone. And this means if you have here, for example, some text fields filled and then you close your app, then all the data is gone. However, if you make use of shared preferences, then the data will be persisted. And again, if you start your app, then all the data which we have put here inside is again inside. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started with a small sample application. So we have here already some data which we can fill in. So I can put here some data inside. And now we want to persist this data and store it on our phone locally. Let's get started by persisting the name. And here I have basically a text field where I put the name attribute inside, which I have stored here at the top. So we have here a string. And every time if we change here this name, then it is again stored within the name field. And now what we want to do is we want to persist this name field, which we have stored here at the top and also load it again so that we have every time persisted our name if we click here on the save button. And therefore, I simply go here to this button, which is the save button. And here, every time if I click on this button, then we want to add some functionality. And what we want to do here is basically to call user simple preferences. And this is a class which I have already created. And here we want to call a method set username, which we want to create. And here inside, we want to put our name, our variable here at the top inside. Now let's implement here this method. And before we are doing this, I want also to initialize our shared preferences. So I have here this field at the top and I also call a method in it. And here you simply call then shared preferences get instance and put this instance here within this field inside. And to make use of shared preferences, you also need to go to your pubspec jaml file. And here you need to add this shared preferences under your dependencies inside. And now we also need to call here this method in it. And therefore we simply go to the main file. And here before you run your application, you call here this user simple preferences. And then you call the init method, which is exactly this method which we have created before. Let's go quickly back to the main. And if you put here this inside, you also need to put this before inside. Otherwise you get an error. And now that we have initialized our shared preferences, we can start by implementing this set username method. Therefore, I go again here inside of this class and I call here this set username where we put our username inside, which we want to store locally. And then we simply call our preferences here at the top. And here inside you have different methods which you can call to persist your data. So we can persist here strings, booleans, doubles, and so on. And we want to call the method set string. And here inside we need to set a key and a value. So let's first of all create a key. And this is then our key where this value will be stored. And we put here simply our key inside. And now comes our value which we need to put inside. So basically for this key username, we store the username. And this is basically everything what we need to do for storing some data. And now we also want to get the username later back. And therefore I simply call another method get username. And here we call again the preferences. And this time you have here next to the set string also a get string. And with this one, you can basically get the string which we have stored before again back. And to access this data, you need to set your key here inside, which you have used before for storing your data. And we have simply used this key username also for storing our data. And now we have finished to implement to store our username and we can already try it out. So I go here and type some data. And then I click on save. And now if I hot restart, you see we don't have here this value inside because we don't load this value currently. And that's what we need to change. And therefore we create here at the top where our name is an init state. And here we want to get the name initially from our phone if there is a name stored. And how we can do this is by calling this simple preferences and the get username method, which we have created before. And this will get us then the username if there is a username stored. Otherwise, this will return here a null. And because we don't want to put here null value within our field, we simply check here if it is null, then we want to put here this empty string instead inside. And now if we have here some data in our field and I click on save, then the data is persisted. And also after the application was closed and if you restart your application, you will see this name here again because we have persisted it and here we load it again. 
Now we want to do the same thing for other fields and therefore we want to look right now at how we can store here this pets. And here you basically have a list of data because you can put here dog inside, a cat or other things. And we simply want to store right now a list of strings. And basically if we change here something then this value which is selected is here stored within our pets variable. And we want to persist now this pets variable. Therefore we go here to our save button which is this button here on the right side. And now we want to call again our simple preferences and this time we want to create a method set pets. And here we want to put then our pets of this list string inside which we want to persist. After this we can go again to our preferences and here we simply create our method set pets and here we get then the list string which we want to persist. And again like before you call this preferences and then you can call again set and this time we want to call here set string list. So you can set here a list of strings and then you simply create also again a key here at the top which we this time call differently. So make sure that you don't have the same name otherwise it will override here the other data. And then we make use of this key pets and put it here inside and next to the key we also need our value and here we put then the list of strings inside. And with this method we basically persist already our pets if we click here on save. And now we also want to get them and therefore I create this get pets method and we call again preferences. And this time we call here instead of get string we call here get string list because we want to get here a list of strings. So make sure that you also match here the right type because otherwise if you choose here the wrong type then you get an error. And because we have set here set string list before we also need to call this time get string list. And here inside you basically put again the key which you have used before for storing your data. So we use here exactly the same key and then we get basically this list of strings our pets back. Now let's also call this method get pets in our user page. So in our init state we want to call this method get pets and therefore I simply override our pets and I call here get pets. And in case this is null then we want to return here an empty list. And with this statement we basically load the pets if we start our phone again from new or if we hot restart our application then the pets are stored here again within this variable. So let's now try it out. So I select here some pets and click on save. And after I have hot restarted or if you close your app and start it again then you see that the pets are persisted. And lastly we want to persist here a data type which is not supported by default by this shared preferences and therefore we want to store here the datetime object. And basically the user can select here a date and this date which we have here is then stored within our field and this field we want to persist to our local storage. Therefore we go again to our save button and here we call another method set birthday and this time we put here this field birthday inside. Then we go again to our preferences and here inside we want to create our set birthday method where we get then the datetime object which we want to persist right now. And here basically what we want to do is we want to make this datetime to a string and therefore we call here this to iso string and this will make out of our datetime object a string object. And then like before we can simply call here our preferences set string. So we call here again preferences set string put here a key inside. So this time we call here key birthday and therefore I create here at the top again another key and make sure that this key has a different name than the other keys. And then you simply put here this birthday our string here inside. And with this one we basically already persist our date to our local storage and we also want to get it back. And therefore I simply call here preferences and this time we want to get a string because we have put a string inside. And then you simply use here the same key like which you have used before for setting our string. And now we need to convert the string again back to a datetime object and therefore you simply call here datetime try pass and put here your birthday inside. And this will make out of your string object again a datetime object. And lastly we go again to our user page and here within our init state method we also want to load our birthday again. So we call here our preferences and the get birthday method which we have created before. And initially if you would start your application and load here your birthday you get a small error. 
So this looks then like this. So it says here must not be null. And this is referencing here to this daytime tripath. So our birthday can never be null. And initially we load here some data which is not existing because we have not stored the daytime yet. And therefore this will be null. And there the error occurs because you cannot pass a null value. And to fix this issue, you simply check here if the birthday is null and if it's null, then you return here a null value. And this makes sure that you don't put here a null value within this method. And now let's try it out. So I select here any date and then I click on save. And now if I hot restart, you see we have here our daytime again inside. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon. Bye.